What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you 10 tips to render faster. Let's get started. I often get asked what computer parts should be upgraded to render faster, but as we all know, upgrading your computer is not cheap and there's a lot you need to consider before buying which can be overwhelming. So I'll save that topic for another video. In this video, I'll show you some tips to render faster using your current setup. Also, I will be using SketchUp and Vera in this video, but most of the tips can be applied to other 3D and rendering softwares as well. Number 1. Reduce poly count. The first thing to know is that the more polygons you have in your model, the longer it will take to render. In other words, the more complicated the scene, the slower the render speed. Here you can see I have two chair models, one has more polygons than the other. And when I render these chairs, the more complicated model took 38.2 seconds to render, and the more simplified model took 35.9 seconds. That's a 5% decrease in render time. This would make a bigger difference when you're dealing with larger projects. To reduce the number of polygons of existing objects, you can use Skim or Transmuter. I'll leave the links for those videos in the description box below. However, remember that whenever you reduce the poly count, the model will reduce in quality and its texture might get messed up. But if we are far away from the models, we cannot notice the difference. So when you're setting up the scene, consider using high poly count models when they're closer to the camera. And for objects that are farther away, you can just use lower quality models. Number 2. Use proxies. If you do decide to have lots of complex objects in your scene, it's a good idea to use proxies. To do that, you can select the objects which you want to turn into proxies, then click this button, then just adjust the setting however you want, and repeat this process for other objects which you want to turn into proxy. As you can see, the original render took 44 minutes and 41 seconds to render, and with the proxies, it reduced to 43 minutes and 54 seconds. This is not a huge improvement, but it still reduced the render time. And this is even more useful when you're dealing with bigger projects. Besides increasing the render speed, it will also make navigating around the model faster because it will reduce the sketch of file size. After converting objects to proxies, remember to remove the original components by going to the components tray, then click here, purge unused components. This will remove the original models and only keep the proxies. Before I save the SketchUp model, you can see the file size is about 122 megabytes. Now I can save it, and the new file size is 118 megabytes. And again, this is even more useful when you're working on bigger projects. If you want to learn more about proxies, I suggest you watch this video. Although it's a little outdated, it's still quite useful. Also consider using the Chaos Cosmo library, which provides high quality proxy render ready models. Number 3. Reduce Texture Resolution For example, here I have a wood material at two different resolutions, one at 1K and one at 4K. I will apply the 4K material to both the wall and the floor, then let's do a test render. As expected, you can see that the material looks really good. Now I will go back and apply the 1K materials to the wall and floor, then render it again. As you can see, the original image took 1 minute and 7.9 seconds to render, but the new one only took 38.5 seconds. However, the material on the floor looks really blurry and less quality. But if you look at the wall far away, you can see that the change in quality is not very noticeable. This is why it's a good idea to consider using high resolution maps only for materials that are up close, and for the rest of the materials in the scene, usually 1K to 2K resolution is good enough. Number 4. Optimize Materials Color One thing that not everyone knows about is that when a material is completely white, it will increase the render time. For example, here I have a kitchen scene with lots of white materials on the cabinets. You can see that the cabinet color is 100% white. Now I will make this white color a bit darker, not too much that is gray, but make it a bit off-white like so. You can see that the original scene with 100% white material rendered in 20 minutes and 16 seconds, but the second scene renders in 20 minutes and 5 seconds. Although it's a small improvement, this is even more useful if the scene is more complicated. Number 5. Minimize displacement. When you have learned about displacement maps, you will often want to use it on every material because it makes the material look amazing. However, displacement maps often slow down your render a whole lot, so consider using displacement maps only when it's necessary, such as materials like bricks, but for materials like wood floor, stucco wall, etc., then bump maps are usually good enough. Number 6. Optimize lighting. Here I have a view which renders in 44 minutes and 41 seconds. You can see that this part is a bit burnt, 
so I'll adjust the camera parameters to make it a bit darker, then re-render it. As you can see, this new image looks darker, but it's faster to render. That's because if the image is too bright, then the highlight burn areas can cause excessive render times. This is why it's important to optimize the lighting in your scene. And if the image is a little too dark, then you can always adjust the exposure in the VFB window after it's rendered. Number 7. Noise Limit Too Low When I'm about to do the final production render, I usually increase the quality settings to high. With the high settings, this scene renders in 44 minutes and 41.9 seconds. However, when we set the quality to high, you can see that the noise limit is at 0.01, which is the reason why the image looks quite smooth. However, the lower the noise limit, the slower the render. A trick that we can use to decrease the render time is to increase the noise limit. For this case, I'll increase it to 0.05 but this will result in a lot of noise, so we will turn on the V-Ray Denoiser. As for the settings, I'll keep it at default. And with the noise limit at 0.05 and the denoiser turned on, it took only 9 minutes and 56.5 seconds. That's a huge improvement. But let's compare the two renders. From afar, you can see that the two renders look quite similar. But as we zoom up close, you can see that the right one has a lot more noise in the render. This is because the denoiser is still turned off. So let's turn off the comparison and double click on the second render. Now it looks smoother. And if we expand the right flyer panel, we can compare the denoiser when it's turned on and off. As you can see, the noise is completely gone. The 9 minute render now looks even smoother than the original render which takes 44 minutes. However, a setback for this is sometimes the denoiser is too strong which can make some parts of the scene lose details. So to fix this, you can adjust the opacity of the denoiser here. By decreasing the opacity, you will add some noise back in the render but also bring back some details. Number 8. Don't use depth of field settings. When I want to create a depth of field effect, I usually don't use a depth of field settings in the camera tab. Instead, I will use a Z depth render element, which will allow you to create a depth of field effect in post production. Here you can see that when I use a depth of field effect, it takes 18 minutes and 31.4 seconds to render. But with the Z depth render element, it only takes 12 minutes and 45.6 seconds. Of course you will have to spend more time in post-production to create a depth of field effect, but there are several benefits when using Z-Depth. One is that you will have the original image without the depth of field effect. And with the Z-Depth render element, you can control which area of the image you want to focus on. If you want to learn more about how to do this in details, I suggest you watch this video on how to use render elements. Number 9. Render Elements This takes me to number 9. Pick and choose your render elements. Before you render, only add the render elements which you plan to use in post-production because each one of them can add more time to your rendering process. Here you can see the one with lots of render elements took 24 minutes and 8 seconds to render compared to 16 minutes for the one with no render elements. So for me, I usually add the previously mentioned Z-Depth. I also use the extra texture render element with a dirt map for ambient inclusion and also other render elements such as material ID, diffuse, light mix, etc. And finally number 10, use Chaos Cloud. I've mentioned Chaos Cloud before in this video. It's basically a cloud rendering service made by Chaos Group, the developer of V-Ray. To use it, you can set up your scene for final production render as usual, then click this drop down button and click on the cloud render button which is also available on the V-Ray toolbar. Next you should see a web page open where you can submit the render. And here's where you can keep track of the render's progress. Now you can wait for the render, but in the meantime, you can still use your computer to work on your project. Once it's done, you can see the information for it on the right side, such as the amount of credits spent and the render time, which in this case is 27 minutes and 42 seconds. This is a huge improvement compared to when I rendered with my PC, which took 44 minutes and 41.9 seconds. That's about a 40% decrease in render time, which is amazing. And if you're happy with the render, you can download it here. The cool thing is that if you have a scene with multiple views, you can render them all with Chaos Cloud. If you click on the Batch Render button, V-Ray will upload all of the views in your scene at once. As you can see, Chaos Cloud is not only really fast, but you can also render multiple images at once. And in the meantime, you can still use your computer to continue working. This has been the greatest game changer for me. So if you want to try it out, you can use this link and sign up for 20 free credits to test your render. And those are the 10 tips to help you render faster. If you're looking for more tutorials, I would suggest you take a look at this class on Skillshare, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in creative skills like design, illustration, and many more. The premium membership will get you unlimited access so you can join any classes and communities that you like. But as part of this sponsorship, 
Skillshare has set up a one month free trial for the first 1,000 people who join, so you can take all of the classes completely for free. If that's something you're interested in, then go to this link here. I will also leave a link to a few useful classes that I took. One of them is Learn SketchUp and V-Ray Beginner to Advanced by Tanish Patel. This is a comprehensive class with four parts that walks you step by step on how to build a house in SketchUp, then render with V-Ray. If you're looking for a similar tutorial for another software, then there's a class called Create Photorealistic Interior Renders with 3S Max and V-Ray by Jack Denham. There are also many more classes and communities that you can join. Again, the first 1,000 people who use this link can join Skillshare today for free. Anyway, that's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment below and let me know if you have any questions. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.